here at the Wrigley Center, they've maintained their cove until it looks like an intact ecosystem. It looks the way the California coast looked before humans really got here. The sea hair, it was like goo and it was really weird. <laughs> but that was, I still loved it. It was really cool. It's like holding with liquid tongs. Oh, yeah. It's so bushy. <laughs> what we started to notice after we were coming here to see the cove and show the kids this intact, incredibly impressive ecosystem was that the Wrigley Center does some very advanced science and we found out that they're willing to share it with kids not only as a teaching tool but really making the kids into citizen scientists. So the kids were able to come here and do things to contribute to ongoing monitoring and ongoing studies that really help us um, keep these ecosystems intact. And this is where you guys come in today, fostering an understanding of the natural world among people of all generations. So if the scientists are going out there and figuring out what's going on, and then we're doing our job getting you to be interested in what's going on, we're all gonna live. So what are the consequences in the way that we choose our, to live our lives? And how do we leave the world in a better state than it was when we got here? That's what we do here. It's amazing. I love this place so much. We've just learned so much in two days and I can't wait for what the other days have to come. goes to a program at Howland's Landing where they get a whole bunch of leadership activities, they're trained to really think about sustainability and the environment, but at the same time they're in the water every day and the, the students who have a little discomfort with that pretty much get over it within that week. Um, they know how to deal with wetsuits and currents and animals and all that stuff. So when they come to the Wrigley they can jump right in and be scientists. I did the rock climbing wall and I made it to the top, but I just promised myself not to look down and I was okay. So I'm gonna go with that same theory. Hi. Good luck. I loved it. It was great. The scariest part about the Eagle's Perch is definitely actually situating yourself on that log. That's that one part where you have to get from the last rung up onto the top of it and you don't have any uh, handholds, that's, that's the part I'm most scared about. But I, I'm going to do it. I don't care if I'm scared, I'm going to do it. That's my attitude towards that.
get me going. I followed this, um, I think it was a zebra bass or something like that. And I followed it from that little place to the next place, and then I realized no one was there. So that kind of freaked me out. But other than that, it was really, really fun. I saw, um, Garibaldi, I saw uh, kelp bass. There were like there were like, like like massive swarms of these fish that like that were like right underneath the pier. When you swim through them, you can just go like right through, and it's really cool to have them like surround you. The water's super clear, clearer than it usually is here, and we were able to see lobsters, uh, even sharks. It was really windy and the water was really rough, so it was really tiring, but it was also really fun. We got um, to Two Harbors and we did some tide pooling. It's a long-term study. And uh, we're studying like the difference in each, uh, the numbers of each things over the last years and the years to come. To see what's changing in the environment and how it affects all the things that live in these tide pool areas. It's important to see how things are surviving and if there's a serious environmental change and it affects all the things that live around. It's important that we can look at it and try and assess the issue. They're going to record that in their system, in both systems. The Wrigley for the Rocky Intertidal Study, that's about how Two Harbors is changing over the years. And then the, the Limpets is for the whole state. So you were just citizen scientists today, which is pretty cool. Yay. Woo! Awesome. I really like this place because I'm learning a ton and I'm having a lot of fun. I'm really tired, I'm worn out, and I'm exhausted. But it doesn't matter, I keep wanting to go on the next adventure, go on the next like trail, go in the next dive because I'm, I'm gonna see something that's I'm gonna take away for the rest of my life. We're also very lucky to have a really excellent science staff at our school and um, for us it's like coming out here and having the ultimate playground to play with our students so we can use their equipment, we've earned their trust to use their laboratories um, to teach out here ourselves. My favorite thing was when we built the um, the ROVs, and um, and we finally got it to work after just like trying time and time again over and over just to get it to work. And when it finally worked, we were like, yes, at last we made something that actually like steered well and stuff like that, like went up and down. An ROV is a remote controlled um, vehicle that can go underwater and look at the like the fish and marine life underwater. So our plan is to basically have. These two oh, yeah. controlling as the forward and propulsion. The, yeah, 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 propulsion and steering, and this one as like the as as a depth controller. Yeah, still good. Still close. Oh wait! Got <laughs> down. Nice run. Yeah. I like to uh, working in teams and having to figure out, like, working through problems. It was really, really fun, and uh, we really got to bond together as a class. And it's just a overall really great experience. So what kids do here is they get into the real cutting edge of where people are adding 
to human knowledge every day. I mean, that's what they do here. They're looking for environmental solutions. You know, you're, all, you're kind of working on yourself and it's really an, an empowering feeling to be able to do all those things. I didn't want to be a scientist until this year, but now I want to be a chemical engineer, so. It's very, it gives you a sense of purpose. There's a lot of learning and uh, we talk about how it pushed us out of our comfort zone, which is a big theme throughout the trip and our kelp rules teaching us about the environment as well as growing as people.